Okay. <clears throat> so, next thing. Um, pretty much I kind of wanted to describe the... Um, describe the surgeries to you guys um, and what all they entail, how they're done, just stuff like that. So, you guys get a good idea of um, what to expect. I'll start with um, breast augmentation. Breast augmentation is quite customizable. Uh, there's different brands of implants, different sizes, shapes, textures, profiles, placements, and incision types. Yes, that is quite a list. So, I'll start with um, shape. So there's round and there's uh, anatomical, which is kind of teardrop shaped. Um, those are used if you don't, if you're if you don't have that much breast tissue and you want to get a very natural look under the muscle or even, you know, under your regular breasts, um, pretty much over the muscle, under your regular breast tissue, um, you can use those. Then on texture, there's smooth and textured. Smooth, of course, is smooth. Textured, of course, um, has kind of little ridges on the implant. Um, they don't, they're not as mobile as the smooth ones, so keep that in mind. They don't move nearly as much because your skin kind of morphs and molds itself onto that implant um, versus smooth where it just kind of, it can't really get a grip of it, so you have a lot more movement with um, smooth implants. Profiles, there's um, low moderate, moderate plus, and high. Those are pretty much based off of projection. More projection, narrower the implant. Also depends on the company, just things like that. Um, so those are things to think about as far as um, what kind of results are you looking for. Also, um, doctor will measure your chest and everything to try and determine what's the best implant for you uh, so next thing is placement you can have it uh, above or below the muscle above is pretty much just behind your natural breast tissue if you have enough it'll look fairly nice if you don't have enough it'll look like you have two baseballs on your chest um, under the muscle, it kind of hides the top part of the implant so you don't have that distinctive roundness, like distinctive implant roundness um, that's very seeable, very visible. Um, so it's just, it just gives a more natural slope and then you'll have the implant. So yeah, um, that that's to create a more natural look. Uh, two different types of implants, saline and silicone. Silicone, you have to be 22 in order to have as an implant, and then also the incision for silicone is bigger, like saline is this big, silicone is like that big, because it's a pre-filled implant and it has to be able to fit in the pocket. So the size you pick is the size you get. There is no adjusting at the end, like uh, what can be done with uh, saline. Um, incision placement, it can be done in the armpit, uh, belly button, um, uh, inframammary fold, which is the fold of your breast, and areolar. So, those are the four places that you can choose to do it. It also depends on the type of implant as to what your options are, what you're limited to as far as options, um, for placement of the scar based on uh, saline or silicone implant. Saline is quite universal, so it's really best to go with that if you if you want the doctor to be able to make a nice last minute decision as to make you just a little bit bigger in the end, then I would go uh, saline. But if you're absolutely sure of yourself, silicone. So that pretty much covers everything you would need to know. Um, Tuba, again, it's like, uh, you should research it, pretty much, um, I did, uh, pretty much they just go through the belly button, 
go on top of your muscle and find um, find your pectoralis muscle make a pocket under it well behind it and do the same thing on both sides of your boobs and then they put the implant in there and they do a sizer and then they insert the saline um, liquid in there so yeah next I'll be moving on to the Brazilian butler